Hi, Christian here with Corner Pocket Jazz with the first video of the instructional series, making sure that you have the best equipment when first learning to play the saxophone so it doesn't hinder your progress. In this video, I want to give you the information to be able to buy the best equipment at a reasonable cost, student level instruments that are going to help you with your learning progress rather than hinder you with poor quality and inferior saxophones, mouthpieces, equipment, and such. So the first thing right off the bat is making sure that you get a decent saxophone. I get so many students that come to me with Amazon saxophones that they paid $100, $150 for, eBay instruments, saxophones that don't even have a name on them, all right? These instruments are to just stay away from them. I, I call them disposable instruments. Many repair technicians also do not like working on these instruments just because the quality is so brittle. They can't work on the instruments or they're always breaking. And in order to fix them, they wind up breaking more than they actually can fix on these instruments. So stay away from those instruments. The first instrument that I always recommend to every single one of my students, no matter what they're playing, is Yamaha. Yamaha, when it comes to band instruments, they don't really make a bad instrument. It doesn't matter what level you get, student level, intermediate level, professional uh, level. And what I mean by that is they have saxophones ranging in price from cheap to more expensive, depending on the quality of workmanship and the uh, options that they have on the instruments. Other saxophone brands that are also good are Selmer, Vito. Uh, Vito's actually, uh, I don't think they're made anymore, but they're the same manufacturer with a different name of Yamaha saxophones, uh, Bundy instruments. Uh, you can also go to sites like Woodwind and Brasswind and just look at their instruments. Not all of their instruments are my first choice, but it's a good bet that if you go to uh, Woodwind and Brasswind, music and arts sometimes, or a good quality music store, they are going to have good instruments, all right? And I'm not talking about your local like record store that also sells instruments or guitar center that sells saxophones. You want to go to a music store if you have one. This is an alto saxophone. Not the smallest, not the biggest, but this is usually the first saxophone that most students learn how to play. Um, so anyways, brand new Yamaha saxophones, the cheapest ones are over $1,000, and that is a very large commitment when you're first learning to play the saxophone. A good music store usually has some kind of rental program that you can rent an instrument and see if it's something that you are going to stick with and going to enjoy. Some of them even have rent to own that you can rent it, and if you decide to buy it, then you have all of that money credited towards buying a new saxophone. Other times, what I would suggest is buying used instruments. You can get those used Yamaha alto saxophones for between four and six hundred dollars, which is much better price than buying brand new. I would highly recommend buying an instrument from a music store, whether it is used or not. Because if you don't know, there's a lot of moving parts. You can see there's a lot of buttons, a lot of moving parts on here. And buying from a private seller you can run into a lot of problems because these saxophones do need to be maintained. And if you get it from somebody that doesn't know anything about it, um, and then a, a, there's a lot of scammers out there, you can get an instrument that needs a ton of work um, before you even are able to play it. Some private sellers will let you take their instrument to a music shop and get it checked out. I would encourage that. Ask if you can get it looked at by a repair technician. If they won't let you do that, I would just steer clear of it. I wouldn't even buy it. It's not worth your time. Mouthpieces are the, the piece that goes onto the saxophone that you actually put your mouth on, okay? They make a huge difference. The first mouthpiece that I always recommend to my students is the Yamaha 4C mouthpiece. This is a relatively cheap mouthpiece. It costs under $30, I believe. Um, and it's just a good quality entry level mouthpiece. It is by no means the best mouthpiece out there, but there's a lot of no name mouthpieces that come with some of these saxophones. And in my experience as a teacher, some of these no name mouthpieces are absolutely terrible. They really, really hinder the progress of being able to develop a good saxophone sound and just 
being able to create a sound in general and, and manipulating it and uh, as you're learning. They can get really, really resistant, really hard to play, really hard to get a sound right at the beginning. And in general, this mouthpiece, I believe, just makes all, all of my students' lives a lot easier when they use this mouthpiece. They don't always come with ligatures. Ligatures do make a difference. However, I haven't seen enough of a difference to be able to recommend a specific kind for my students. As long as you have a ligature, um, uh, uh, typically a metal one, uh, to, to put on your mouthpiece to hold the reed. Reeds are also an important part of the saxophone that can help or hinder the progress when you're first learning to play the saxophone. Typically, I like to start my students on a two and a half, and that is usually a good strength depending on the students. Um, I might change a number, but typically lower than a two and a half, you're going to start getting some squeaks and higher than a two and a half, you're going to get really tired and probably frustrated with creating a sound. I usually recommend Rico's two and a halves. <clears throat> These are tenor sax reeds, but this is kind of like, it, it's an orange box reed. They're cheap. They come usually 10 to 25 in a, in a pack and they're just good beginner reeds. I upgrade later on. However, it's most beginners cannot tell the difference when they are first learning to play. When you go to a music store, they usually recommend you buy Van Doren reeds. These just happen to be clarinet, but the boxes look the same. These are more expensive. This is what I use in a professional setting, and they're just not necessary for beginner students. You don't need to spend the extra money on Van Doren reeds. And most of the students ignorant of what they need will buy them because the music store suggests them. Just go with cheap Rico reeds. When you do buy a mouthpiece, it doesn't always come with a ligature uh, or, or a cap, unless if you buy a whole entire kit. Uh, saxophone kit, but you can get these at the at the music store. Uh, caps are pretty read readily available. This isn't the one that came with my mouthpiece, but I usually like to suggest plastic caps because when you put them on, they won't chip the mouthpiece. They do have metal caps, and you know sometimes when you're trying to put something away quick or accidents happen, we can hit it and we can chip the mouthpiece, and that's not going to be good. So I usually recommend plastic caps like this for the mouthpiece. We also have neck straps. Personally. I don't really care too much about neck straps. I just use plain one that came with one of my saxophones. Very simple neck strap. Adjust like this. There's a hook like that. Typically, depending on the, the student that is learning, I usually suggest a Neotech neck strap. They're very readily available on Amazon and your music stores. They have this extra padding, so it... it it, and it's a little bit stretchy, which I don't particularly like, but it has the padding. A lot of students will complain about the weight of the saxophone around their neck when they're first learning to play, so that's why I usually suggest these. And also, if you get the specific model with this, it's a little bit safer, uh, so the saxophone doesn't actually fall off the hook. This spring will keep the saxophone on. Do I do always tell my students to never let go of the saxophone, though, because I have seen these clips break, and then the saxophone drops, and then it needs to go into the shop. Some other good things to have if you don't buy an actual saxophone kit, um, I always, always recommend getting a reed guard for your, your reeds. The plastic cases that the reeds come in are not designed to hold the reeds. They are only designed really for packaging. And what happens is the moisture from your spit, the moisture from the, the weather around you will cause, cause the reeds to warp. These are less than $5 and the reed goes into them and it holds the reed in place so it does not warp. It holds the reed flat. It makes night and day making sure that your reeds are flat. A lot of students don't know that reeds warp and they put the reed on and they're, they don't know why they're struggling that day and it's probably because they're warping. And even if a reed looks fine, it could be warped. And if it's warped, you're going to struggle making any kind of sound no matter what. These prolong the, the, the reed life. Also make sure that you have some cork grease doesn't really matter what kind of cork grease you have, it's, it's, it's the same basically all around. And this is to put on right here so the mouthpiece slides on and off easier and it also preserves the life of the cork so it doesn't dry out. I also recommend a swab similar to this one. This one has to be, happens to be a synthetic silk swab to clean out your saxophone ever, 
after every time that you use them. Some of these uh, foam swabs can get stuck in the saxophone because they are so big. I think I paid around $15 for this. It's really not that bad. Now you'll also need music when first learning to play the saxophone. In general, if you are learning by yourself, almost any book will do on how to learn to play the saxophone. If you plan on getting a teacher or if your child is going to be joining a band program, I would ask that teacher for suggestions before going out and buying a book. Each of these books have their advantages and disadvantages. Personally, myself, I use Essential Elements. It is a band method book and it goes slow enough for most of my students not to get too frustrated when first learning how to play. Now, being a band method, it is designed to be used in a band setting. However, it can be used in an individual setting. It just moves slower than some other books. It doesn't always teach the best things at the best moment, in my opinion, as far as saxophone uh, pedagogy. But in general, I find that most of, the, most of the students that I teach are in band settings, and a lot of schools use this book. So I usually just stick with this book to make their lives a little bit easier. Uh, it moves rather slow, um, but depending on the student, it depends on what book I recommend. Another book that is very common is this book, Tradition of Excellence. This happens to be book two. Uh, the first one is Red, and it's a continuation of Standard of Excellence. Same series, just Tradition of Excellence is newer. Also a band method. For other students that might not be joining a band setting, I tend to recommend other books, and these are individual uh instrument specific books and usually what i do is i recommend the rubank elementary method for saxophone it doesn't matter what saxophone you play it's just designed for saxophone it is very old it is kind of boring so i usually don't recommend this book to kids i use it more for adults um and depending on how hard they work, I sometimes couple it with the alto saxophone student instrumental course or whatever saxophone they're using. And I use the two books together. Hopefully all this information has been helpful. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below. And thank you for watching.